am so excited that we still get to have worship because you know what? It's not about being in a building. It's about getting excited about his word and about being together. And how cool is this that we can do it right on a screen? Yes, you love screen time. I know that you do. Anyway, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can be together at a time when it's best to not be together because you're trying to keep us all safe. Be with everyone, Lord, until we figure out how to deal with this virus. And Lord, just be big in the midst of all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm pretty excited about today's message because, well, you know, I have toys. But the deal is this. I think if I could ask for anything in the whole wide world, right now it would be a magic wand. Because I would just want to go like this. Hey, guys, here's the cure for the coronavirus. And pull it right out of my hat. Or, hey, hey, somebody needs a new job. Pull it right out of my hat. Whatever it is, a cure for cancer, a cure for this trouble thing that somebody has going on in their life, I would want to be able to pull it out right now. But you know what? Magic isn't real. It isn't real at all. And so I can have a wand if I want to, and I can have all the hats that I want, but even the best magicians in the world are only an illusion. But there's one thing that isn't. God's word. And so we are going to take a look at this right now because I am so excited. So if you have your Bible with you, I want you to open it up to Romans 8, Romans chapter 8. If you have the Adventure Bible, I want you to know that you are on page 1246 because that will help you turn right to it. But if you go to Romans 8 and you go down to verse 14, here's what you're going to see. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. But what does that really mean? You know, one of the things that Chap's talking about in big service is how amazing it is that God, our Creator, shows His presence all the time. So one of the things you can do is go right outside and look up into the sky. Now, why would that matter? Because the sky is moving constantly and the clouds are shifting constantly and God created those. That means that there is total movement. That means I am led by the Spirit of God, the God who controls the entire universe. He leads me? Oh my gosh, this is big, but it brings me back to my magic wand. You see, here's the thing. This magic wand can't do anything. But God is at the beginning and at the end. He is the one who was here before time. He knew before this coronavirus outbreak, before anything bad ever happened, he knew that it was going to happen, but he also knows what the outcome is going to be. He's at the beginning and the end. He is the coolest. He is right there. Here's where we are, right in the middle of it. We're like, but, but, but what's going to happen? But, but, how is this going to be resolved? But, but, how am I going to make up with my friend that I can't get along with at school? But, but, how can we fix this? And you know what he says? Don't you remember? Whatever problem you will ever face, I'm at the end. I'm right there. Here's how we have to start to look at it. The middle part is the best part. The in-between, when life gets rough, when there's a challenge. That's the best part. That's when we get to shine and see him work. I went in the grocery store the other day, and I was trying to buy a few things, and the lines were so long. It was crazy. But here's the best part of that. People were nice to each other in the lines. People were thinking about who they might be able to reach out to in their neighborhood that couldn't get their own groceries. People were actually talking to each other. Usually when you're in line at the grocery store, you might talk to your own kids, but you don't talk to the people before you or people behind you. But everyone was talking to everybody. You see that right there? That's in the in-between. Until there's a solution to this or any problem that we have, God says, hmm, watch me shine in the midst of it. And I love that. And so in the in-between, God's with us more than ever. And if we are led by his spirit, we'll be looking for that shine. We won't be walking in this going, oh, I'm looking for a magic wand. We'll be going in the in-between. I remember the each end. And so I'm going to tell you a story that uh, Pastor Chap is telling today, and it is so good. So come over here with me. It's really fun. <laughs> Chap used to like to go with this group of guys. Imagine seven men getting in these sailboats. They were sitting there, 
and, and, and a group of them got together one day and said, hey, there's these cool sailboats. They're not very big. It's just kind of fun. And one guy said, I don't want to sail with you, but you can store them in my garage. And they were like, okay, that'll be great. So they all go down and they get these sailboats and they start to every single weekend have these races all the time. And when they're done, they go back to land and they would all get together and they would have some food and they'd hang out. And then at the end of it, they'd all hold hands and pray because they had just had a great day together. It was a time of fellowship. They weren't in a church, but they were a group of guys who really loved God, sailing and doing something totally crazy, and then coming together at the end and being glad that their friends were able to do such a cool thing. But one day, Chap invited a guy up from California, and they were having a great race. A friend couldn't wait to go with them, and they all get in their boats, and they go out there, and they're sailing as fast as they can, and they're super competitive, and all of a sudden, the wind died. And when the wind died, they were all like just sitting there going, what are we going to do? And so as being as competitive as they were, they were all laid down on their sailboats to try to get in the right position, to try to shift the weight and make their boat go a little bit more. And they're trying and they're trying and nothing's happening because, you know, if there's no wind, a sailboat won't go. And so they're sitting there and they're like, oh, we know we can do this. You know, they were probably paddling and cheating. But anyway, so here they are and they're all trying to go and they're not going anywhere. And all of a sudden, Chap's friend from California says, hey, uh, what are we even doing, Mike? We're wasting our time. And one guy on another boat looks over and goes, we're not wasting our time. We're floating with purpose. And really think about that for a second. Floating with purpose. They were totally safe. They were floating. Nothing wrong was happening. But they needed wind to finish the race. We need wind to finish our race. And we're going to get it because remember, I just told you that story about you can go out and you can see in the sky. The creator of the universe put those clouds up there, but they're constantly moving. Maybe not at the pace we want. Maybe things don't happen as fast as we think we want them to. But think again about those sailboats. You see, once that wind hits again, those suckers take off and it's so fun. And they head to the finish line and they get there. And when they do, they have that same Super fun gathering at the end where they have their food and their fellowship and they say, we finished strong and they praise God for that again too. Here is the clincher. Right now we got to float with purpose. We are waiting for the wind of change to find out that solutions are coming, whether it be the coronavirus or whether it be how to turn 12 instead of 11. Life has challenges. But God will always be there. He is the wind in our sails, and we're going to have fun doing it. So gather with who you can, whether it be online or just with your family, because we don't need to be in a specific building. At St. Andrews, we're a church family no matter where we are. And where two or more are gathered, he is here. So now we got to go back and finish because I'm kind of missing my wand. You know, I know that you can go to Universal Studios right now and you can get a very cool Harry Potter wand. And I know that you can go to the Great Wolf Lodge and you can get a wand there that makes things happen and opens up treasure boxes. And I even have a wand right here. But this one's the most significant to me because it reminds me he is the beginning, he is the end, and we're going to shine in the in-between. Let's go back to God's Word for one more thing that is like kind of the frosting on the cake. And that is that if we keep going in Romans 8 and we look at the fact that um, if you move down to chapter 8, verse 17, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And if you go all the way to verse 19, I want to tell you something really fun. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Hmm. I'm looking at those verses and I'm like wrestling with this. And here's what I see. We're talking about the creator of the universe who moved those clouds. We're talking about being his heirs. We get to inherit like amazing blessings, but also go through some tough times knowing that he's at the end of it. And then in the end, we wait with eager expectation, eager expectation to see the good that's going to come of this. So God's bringing something fantastic from all of this. And it says, in eager expectation for
for the children of God to be revealed. Hey guys, let's reveal God in a way that no one's ever seen. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus like we never have before. Nobody needs to be afraid right now because we know the end. God is good and he is in control. Have a great day, you guys. We are so looking forward to how we are going to be the church during this time and watch for creative ways.